from Boko Haram terrorists to kill a herdsman and unknown gunmen. Nigeria's security infrastructure has suffered over the past few years. News of kidnappings, murder and attacks are reported almost every day. And these events have transcended the common man and have begun to affect even those in the leadership positions. And although President Buhari has reiterated his resolve to tackle insecurity, it still remains rife in the land. To discuss this menace and possible solutions is Fola Otha Ware. He is a former Solicitor General of Lagos State. Thank you very much, Mr. Ware, for joining us. Thank you for All having right. me. Um, so, of course, uh, just like my in intro has said, um, it's, it's very interesting and peculiar, the circumstance that Nigeria has found itself in. I mean, recently, Dr. Solomon Winning, who is uh, the chairman of the National Restoration Party, NRP, in his Independence Day message, um, said that we, the only thing that we need to, that can help us out of this um, you know, insecurity that we're facing in Nigeria is divine intervention. But I really wonder, are we going to wait for God to come down and fight, mm -hmm. you know, the war against insecurity? Uh, I think outside of, of biblical accounts, there's no recorded historical event when the Lord himself came down physically to stop uh, such the things that are going on in Nigeria. So I think we've got to be more practical. Yes, prayers help, but prayers along with a plan. I think is what we need. Uh, uh, and we, we have to accept the fact that this sudden, uh, almost viral-like spread of security has taken everybody by surprise. Even the, even the, um, the authorities and the, the various uh, agencies or institutions that have been set up to, 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 to fight or to control insecurity has taken everybody by surprise and the spread has been so rapid I mean, Kaduna is off, off the network uh, uh, today uh, uh, as a, a means of fighting the terrorists or, or, or bandits or whatever we call them, and to keep them from communicating. Zamfara has been off the grid uh, for, for a couple of weeks. Uh, Sokoto was attacked the day before. The other day was uh, the dreadful, brutal killing of... Um, of uh, Professor Akuyuli, you know, it, 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 in Lagos there was a, a kidnap or two. I mean, it's 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 extraordinary the spread at which you know the speed at which it has spread, etc. And 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 for me, the only answer, the, the reason we have government, is that they just have to find a way to bring this thing under control. Nobody else has the authority to do it. We don't want to rely on. Uh, we don't want to rely on. Um, non-state actors, which is becoming increasingly the case. So I think the government just has to, uh, I, I can understand in a way, in a manner, why insurgency is proving so difficult to, to um, deal with. Um, everybody thought, oh, the army has the power to deal with any kind of uh, violence. But this is, uh, we're now in the age of uh, asymmetrical warfare. Our army traditionally was trained to face other armies and protect territorial integrity. Now they are, uh, uh, they are compelled to fight uh, asymmetric battles within the country against people who are not like a regular army, who do not wear uniforms, who do not look any different from the regular citizen. And that's going to be a challenge. So it has taken the army time, I think, to change its doctrine to change the kind of weaponry it needs, the type, the type of training, etc. Hmm. But the first line of defense, which is the police, is the one we haven't concentrated much on. I mean, the police today is just intrinsically unable to deal with the sheer scale of uh, of um, of crime and banditry and uh, murder, as you said, and and and, and so on that we, we have today. So we have to look at the police because the army is not designed to uh, deal with internal um, security. So we have to relook at the, the police. We have to free up the resources. We should stop VIP protection as a, as a, as a basis 
uh, of which to fight crime and let the police um, um, be able to function within their various structures and divisions and so on. So my first thought is that um, we have to, the government has to be, recommit itself. Sometimes governments in Nigeria have been overly political or they've been ambivalent about what exactly is going on, etc. But the law is clear. Anybody who breaks the law, no matter your status, no matter your tribe, no matter your uh, social uh, uh, arrangements, must uh, be made to, uh, to, to face the law. So I think if we can depoliticize a little and um, build up uh, uh, maybe a stronger strategy and, and remind ourselves that if this continues for the next five years, Nigeria will be broke. And talking, talk, talk, talking about that, there's a research that, um, re that yeah. surfaced recently um, that says that the world risks a humanitarian uh, crisis of 200 yeah. million people as a result of, mm. um, you know, uh, insecurity, uh, if nothing yeah. is done to stem it down. Now, I always yes. ask why, because this, is, this, this issue of insurgency is not peculiar to Nigeria. It's a problem in the Sahel. Uh, you yes, know, yes. of Africa, uh, but, but and even as far as Mozambique, exactly. Yes, but but I'm I'm wondering. It did not start today, and I'm talking specifically about the banditry that we're dealing with today. Oh yes. yes. How did we let it get to this point where we're now trying yes. to look for ways to stem it when we could have done something early enough? Well, you know, like I said, like I said, um, our, our institutions are trained to deal with, or were trained, I should say, to deal with specific threats. I don't think anybody um, was able to anticipate uh, the kind, the spread. And, and remember the spread. I'm, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry to butt in, but this did start as a threat of sorts. Many raised alarms. And then at the time when these alarms were raised, yes. they were termed to be political. And yes. it was coming from yes. certain people that's who were trying I, to divide the country. I, that's what I said that the approach has sometimes been political. Even the naming, even the naming of, 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 of the uh, perpetrators as bandits rather than terrorists, some people saw as political. Now the Senate is asking the government to declare uh, the bandits terrorists. That's because you, it's a different approach. You know, a when you call somebody a bandit, if you've, if you've ever been interested in uh, stories of the Old West in the United States in the days of uh, uh, what, what were Billy the Kid and all the other, you know. The word bandit was almost, you know, was almost, uh, what's the word now? It was almost looked upon with uh, some kind of uh, admiration. But a terrorist is a terrorist. And then you can call in all the other world groups, etc., to help you. So uh, I think... The, the approach is very important, the approach we have adopted. We felt from 2009, when we first uh, started battling uh, Boko Haram, which was then perhaps the only insurgent group in Nigeria, we thought we had enough military force to dispose of them. Perhaps if we hadn't uh, uh, killed their leader then, we might not be in the situation we're in now. But we've way gone past that now. I, I don't think, I honestly don't think that anybody, both those who warned and those who were in the position to listen, I don't think anybody um, expected. Mr. Wari, just to put a, a cap on this issue, because we're almost out of time. Former President Goodluck Jonathan has been quoted to say in um, his message also to Nigerians for the 61st uh, independence, uh, he has said that we must all join hands um, in securing the nation. Sheikh Gumi has also said that uh, he was quoted to say that Nigerians must um, bear the responsibility for insecurity in the country. But let's really look at the, uh, you know, how serious and the body language of our government in dealing with this, uh, you know, insecurity, how sincere is the government? And I'm not just talking about governments at, uh, at the federal level. I'm talking about the states where this insecurity is going on. Are they really sincere in dealing with this insecurity? And if they are, how soon can we see this becoming a thing of the past? 
Let's be clear. The states, the states have little capacity to deal with security at this level. Like this is a this is a, a federal uh, obligation. Although the states have supported in many ways in terms of uh, resources and so on and some social programs. But I, and I, I want to discount. I, I'm, I I want us to discount at least from my perspective what Gumi is saying because I really never understand what he's saying. But certainly, the citizens of Nigeria have been a bit passive. Most wars, you know, in history, have been fought with the support of civilians. The government can't keep uh, funding this war by itself. So my view is that. This, we should start thinking about security bonds, you know, floating bonds, which are repayable in, say, 20, 30 years, with, with which we can finance the, the war. And, 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 and more importantly, I think, for the police, it's time to free up the over 100,000 armed VIP protection officers and send them into the field where they can secure the space for everybody and not just for a selected few. I think sometimes our priorities are a bit uh, funny and we need to review a lot of the uh, programs that we have in terms of dealing with insecurity. All right. Well, Mr. Fola, yeah. Arthur Wari is a former Solicitor General of Lagos State. We really want to appreciate you for being part of this conversation and happy Independence thank, Day thank, once again. Thank you very much. Sorry for the technical problems. No problem. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, I want to thank every single person who's been part of this conversation because we are almost uh, at uh, out of time. But I'd like to admonish every Nigerian. The journey to building the Nigeria that we all want, the Nigeria that we all want to leave for our children, begins with us all. All hands must be on deck. You, I, your neighbor, the next man, whatever ethnicity they belong to, it is our Nigeria, and we cannot build it if we're all not coming together to do it. I am Mary Anakum. Have a good evening, and happy Independence Day.